It's common for people to ask me questions about dog behavior issues that they may be having with their dog at home. And unfortunately, I think they're really hopeful for me to give them some type of magical quick fix answer. Now, often when you have behaviors that take a lot of work to fix, it can't be fixed with one simple change. Um, so what I'd like to talk to you about today is keeping in mind how dogs learn. There's a few tricks that I can give you about preventing the problem from getting any worse until you're able to get some advice from your local dog trainer. My name's Kale McCann. This is my eight-year-old all-Canadian dog, Funky Monkey. Welcome back to McCann Dogs. Now, it would be impossible for me to give you the answers to every single behavioral issue that you may be having. So what I'm going to do is focus on three common behavioral issues that people often ask us about. Now, keep in mind, in order to get rid of these behaviors for good, you really need to train your dog and learn the proper steps as to what you need to do in order to help your dog learn better, um, better choices. And we certainly can help you with all of those things uh, through our classes. So in the meantime, what I'm going to do is give you some advice on how to prevent your dog from doing some of these unwanted behaviors. Now the first issue is barking. Now this could be your dog barking in the backyard or maybe barking at people or things that bypass the window uh, in your living room. Uh, this is pretty common for the dogs to do and barking is a really self-rewarding behavior. So one of the best ways to stop your dog from barking is preventing it from happening in the first place. So um, it might be that you don't allow your dog to be in the backyard uh, unsupervised so that they can't have a chance to bark at things that pass by. Or if it's the, the window that your dog likes to sit and bark at people as they walk by don't allow them access to that room or keep them away from the window or maybe choose to crate them when you can't watch them. It's important that you don't allow your dog to learn that those types of behaviors are uh, fun for them to do because often when the dog barks at something they get a reaction from whatever they're barking at and that actually can fuel the fire and make it worse. So again try to prevent it from happening by removing the dog from the situation. The second behavior we often get asked about is chewing. Now it's important that when you have a, a young dog or a, a dog that's chewing in the house that you do puppy proof your house to some extent. Now you don't need to clear your entire house of, of all of your things, but certainly make it easier for your dog to make good choices. Um, the other thing I would recommend is make sure your dog does have something that they can chew that's their own, whether it's something safe like a nylon bone or a Kong, something that they can have access to all of the time. Um, and most importantly, you need to supervise your dogs. Dogs chew for a number of reasons, um, but if you aren't there to stop them from chewing and redirect them to something else, it's impossible to fix that behavior. Again, chewing is one of those self-rewarding behaviors. So again, make sure that you're um, preventing the problem from happening by supplying your dogs with things that they can chew and also preventing it from happening in the first place by supervising them. If you can't supervise them, then you can put them away in their crate for the time being. Another behavior people often ask us about is when their dog pulls them uh, on the leash towards another person or maybe towards another person with a dog when they're out for a walk. Now there's a couple ways that you can prevent this from happening. The first thing is you may consider when and where you're walking your dog. So if you find that you see a lot of people out on your street, maybe choose to walk at a less busy time of the day or maybe in the evening. Um, maybe choose a less busy street as well so that you're not uh, constantly being bombarded with, uh, with people and, and dogs and distractions. Um, and if that can't be avoided, then you may consider crossing the street or even turning and going in a different direction. One of the ways to help get better control over your dog is to further yourself from a distraction. The closer you are to the distraction, the harder it is to control the dog, the further away, the easier it is. So if I was to spot a distraction up ahead, whether it be a person or a dog, I might just choose to turn and go a different direction, make the easier choice for my dog to be, uh, to be successful. Along with preventing these behaviors from happening, it's important that you positively reinforce your dog for making a good choice. So if you're out for a walk with your dog and they make a good choice, they walk on a loose leash, they are more focused on you, make sure you have an opportunity to reward them. You could use food, you could even just bend down and pet and praise your dog. Um, if they decide to chew on a bone rather than your shoe in the house, acknowledge that, say something, praise them, let them know they've made a good choice. You know, if somebody walks by your, your window and they choose not to bark and they're focused more on you or they just maybe watch, you know, quietly Again, that's a great opportunity for you to tell your dog how wonderful of a choice that they've made. Now remember, if you can be consistent about preventing problems and you can balance that with rewards, you might just end up getting a, a great solution to some of the problems that you may be having. Now we publish new videos every single Thursday, so if you want to learn more about dog training, make sure you come back and see us. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. If you like today's video, make sure you give us a thumbs up. For now, happy training. See you soon.